I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We are continuing in Alma. We are in the stories of Amalekiah. He has made himself king over the Lamanites and has now incited them to once again come to war against the Nephites. He has raised a massive army and is marching straight for Zarahemla in the hope of conquering the Nephites by sheer numbers. On the other hand, Moroni has been preparing his people, building forts, places of refuge, and inspiring them through the word of God. We pick it up now in chapter 49. It's a little long, not real long, but a little long. So we're going to read the first 15 verses in this video. Invading Lamanites are unable to take the fortified cities of Ammonihah and Noah. Amalekiah curses God and swears to drink the blood of Moroni. Elaman and his brethren continue to strengthen the church. And now it came to pass in the eleventh month of the nineteenth year, on the tenth day of the month, the armies of the Lamanites were seen approaching towards the land of Ammonihah. And behold, the city had been rebuilt, and Moroni had stationed a moon. And behold, the city had been rebuilt, and Moroni had stationed an army by the borders of the city, and they had cast up dirt round about to shield them from the arrows and the stones of the Lamanites. For behold, they fought with stones and with arrows. Behold, I said that the city of Ammoniah had been rebuilt. I say unto you, yea, that it was in part rebuilt. And because the Lamanites had destroyed it once because of the iniquity of the people, they supposed that it would again become an easy prey for them. But behold, how great was their disappointment! For behold, the Nephites had dug up a ridge of earth round about them, which was so high that the Lamanites could not cast their stones and their arrows at them that they might take effect. Neither could they come upon them, save it was by their place of entrance. Now at this time the chief captains of the Lamanites were astonished exceedingly because of the wisdom of the Nephites in preparing their places of security. Now the leaders of the Lamanites had supposed, because of the greatness of their numbers, yea, they supposed that they should be privileged to come upon them as they had hitherto done. Yea, and they had also prepared themselves with shields and with breastplates, and they had also prepared themselves with garments of skins, yea, very thick garments, to cover their nakedness. And being thus prepared, they supposed that they should easily overpower and subject their brethren to the yoke of bondage, or slay and massacre them according to their pleasure. But behold, to their uttermost astonishment, they were prepared for them in a manner which never had been known among the children of Lehi. Now they were prepared for the Lamanites to battle after the manner of the instructions of Moroni. And it came to pass that the Lamanites, or the Amalekiahites, were exceedingly astonished at their manner of preparation for war. Now if King Amalekiah had come down out of the land of Nephi at the head of his army, perhaps he would have caused the Lamanites to have attacked the Nephites at the city of Ammonihah. For behold, he did care not for the blood of his people. But behold, Amalekiah did not come down himself to battle. And behold, his chief captains durst not attack the Nephites at the city of Ammonihah, for Moroni had altered the management of affairs among the Nephites, insomuch that the Lamanites were disappointed in their places of retreat, and they could not come upon them. Therefore they retreated into the wilderness, and took their camp, and marched towards the land of Noah, supposing that to be the next best place for them to come against the Nephites. For they knew not that Moroni had fortified, or had built forts of security for every city in all the land round about. Therefore they marched forward to the land of Noah, with a firm determination, yea, their chief captains came forward, and took an oath that they would destroy the people of that city. But behold, to their astonishment, the city of Noah, which had hitherto been a weak place, had now, by the means of Moroni, become strong, yea, even to exceed the strength of the city of Ammonihah. And now, behold, this was wisdom in Moroni, for he had supposed that they would be frightened at the city of Ammonihah, and as the city of Noah had hitherto been the weakest part of the land, therefore they would march thither to battle, and thus it was according to his desires. I find this fun. But let, let us go back a moment to the previous chapter, where it talks about the fortifications that Moroni is setting up. He set up fortifications in every land, in every town. Now, these fortifications weren't around the city themselves. He said he built forts, or places of refuge, meaning that if the armies of the Lamanites came in, it was a place for the people of the town to flee to for protection. Most likely, they were not built 
north of the city, so the Lamanites came in and just destroyed the city. They were built south of the city, and that's where the army would go. And then if the Lamanites tried to march around it, then the army of the Nephites could come out and attack them, or could attack them from the fort. So these were forts guarding the borders, most likely. That, that's the way I see this. And now Ammonihah, this city was destroyed by the Lamanites in the 10th or 11th year of the Judges. I can't quite remember. And now we're in the 19th year. So this is eight or nine years later. The city has begun to be rebuilt, but it's only a part of what it used to be. Moroni, knowing what had happened, I mean, he would have been 18 at the time that Ammonihah was destroyed. So he remembers it, he builds it up, and if you, if you will recall, at the time that Ammonihah was destroyed, after they destroyed that city, the Lamanites then attacked the land of Melech and Noah, and that's where they took their captives and fled out, and Zoram and his sons had to chase them down and rescue the captives. But those captives were taken from the lands of Noah and Melech. Now, Ammonihah is a little farther north. I think Noah was a little bit in the more south and probably closer to the coast on the west. And so the Lamanites came up through the wilderness to attack Ammonihah, and they said, no, we can't do that. They, the wall was too high. They couldn't shoot over it with any accuracy. In order to get over the wall, they were going to be shooting blind, and all the Nephites had to do was stand up next to the wall, and the Arabs would just go past them and hit behind them. It just, there wasn't any way to do an effective attack. And so they leave Ammonihah, and they come down to Noah, thinking, okay, this is the next place. We, we destroyed Ammonihah easily last time. And then we took some captives out of Noah, so let's go there next. <laughs> but it's still built up by Moroni. And it says this is something that has never been done among the children of Lehi. There was never fortifications like this. Just as there had never been breastplates and arm shields and headplates and all these things, the armament of, of Moroni. He not only built armor that had never been seen among the Nephites, but he built forts. He completely changes everything. Like he says there, I did like the way he put it there. For Moroni had altered the management of affairs. This was something completely new. Nobody had ever done this before. Moroni was inspired. He wasn't just a faithful man. He wasn't just a great military strategist in battle. He was inspired in defending his people. And remember, I think this is kind of funny, that when Moroni fought against Zarahemna and the Zoramites and all that, the Zoramites accredited the victory of, ne of the Nephites to their armor. So you're not winning because God's on your side, you're winning because you got all this newfangled armor, it's not fair, and that's why you're winning. Amalekiah takes the Zoramites and makes them all of his chief captains. So you guys know the Nephite strategies, you know how they work. What do they do? They make armor. They imitate the armor of Moroni. And now they're thinking, hey, we've got the same armor. Now our numbers will be enough to defeat them because we're evenly matched with the armor. But they get there, and they've got all the fortifications. And like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's a new thing. The armor was new. They had never seen it before. That's why you're winning. And now they got all the fortifications. Moroni is simply changing everything. He's mixing it up. And the Lamanites and the Zoramites, they can't. They, they just, they're not prepared for it. They don't have the imagination to deal with this. It's just kind of funny. But I'm going to leave that here. We'll finish, chapter, we'll finish this chapter in the next video. So I will see you there.